Hi friends, welcome back. Here we are talking about your period explained, what is normal and what is not. I think it's really important that you understand the hormone cycle, but probably more importantly is for you to know what's a normal period and what is not so that you can get help if needed. Meaning you can know that it is okay to go see a doctor and it is okay to ask questions and advocate for yourself. Hi friends, welcome back. We are gonna talk all about your period and I'm so excited to have you here watching. We're gonna talk about what's normal so that you can know what is not normal. If you watch the episode where we talk about your hormones, you have a better understanding of how your body is controlling your period, but that doesn't really get down to the questions that I'm asked the most. Is my period normal? What are signs that I need to go see a doctor? I'm gonna start out with a huge apology from me to you really from all doctors to any woman out there. I hear all the time that women are going to their doctors complaining of abnormal periods, whether it's pain or bleeding, irregularity, and they are getting brushed aside. Women do not feel heard or listened to, and I find it completely inappropriate. My advice when somebody reaches out to me with this is exactly the same no matter what. Please find a new doctor, please, 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 you deserve better than that. Please find somebody who listens to you. I know it's not always that easy. Insurance plans can dictate who you can see, but be an advocate for yourself. Do not be afraid to stand up for yourself. Do not be afraid to bring knowledge to the table and ask questions. It is okay to ask questions and you should. You deserve to understand your body. Now, if we're gonna dive into the period, a few things that are really important. One is that day number one is the first day of full flow, day number one. So when you look at your period, the first and second day should be the heaviest and then it should get lighter. Normal periods are between 21 to 35 days, but that doesn't mean your period can hop all along in there. Really what that means is that your period can be any of those intervals, but it should be the same for you. So if your period is 28 days, it should be 28, 27, 29. So varying just a small amount every month. So that's day number one, first day of full flow, until the last day before your next period begins. That's considered the cycle. Now, it can be at the short end, it can be 22, 23 days, it can be at the long end, 24, 25 days, it doesn't really matter as long as it's the same for you. So what I do in clinical practice is I ask women, hey, open up your phone and point to the day where your next period will come next month. And if they can't do it, your periods aren't regular. So if you can say, oh yeah, it'll be this day or the day before or day after, and that's great because the number one sign of ovulating is having regular periods. And so if you have regular periods, that means great, you're ovulating. That means your hormones are in check and that means that you are going to have an easier time getting pregnant than somebody who is not ovulating. Ovulation is normal for women. So regular periods, good. Irregular periods, not so good. So we can call that different stages of ovulatory dysfunction. One of the mildest is called luteal phase defect. So this can be where the second half of the period is short. It can cause short cycles. So if your cycles are on that shorter end, so every 16 days or something, or if you have a lot of spotting in the second half of your cycle. So if you tell me that, yeah, my period starts, but I have spot for four days and then my period comes, that's not normal and I'm concerned then maybe your body is not ovulating well and you don't have a corpus luteum making very good progesterone. So super short cycles, we are concerned about luteal phase deficiency or spotting in the luteal phase. On the other end of the spectrum is that your cycles could be really long. And so really long cycles are not normal either. You shouldn't be just sporadically ovulating. You should be predictably ovulating. And irregular cycles is called metarrhagia. So that means that your period, your menses, is coming at irregular intervals. When it comes at irregular intervals like that, there can be a variety of causes. But my huge public service announcement is this. If your periods are irregular or absent, please know why. Don't just go around life saying, well, I only get a period a few times a year. That's great, so I don't have to worry about it. That is not right. 
something may be wrong. Maybe it's easily fixed. Maybe you need to change your lifestyle or take a medication. Maybe you need hormones replaced so you don't have long-term problems later on. Whatever it is, please, please, please go see somebody so we can figure out what is wrong. And you can see an OBGYN, a primary care provider, or a specialist like myself. Please go and see somebody if your period is abnormal. Some causes are usually either at the brain level or at the ovary level. So from the brain, what can happen is the pituitary gland can have an abnormal release of FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. Common causes can be thyroid disease, both hypo and hyper, or prolactin abnormalities. Prolactin is super fascinating because as your prolactin rises, you actually see a very distinct change in your periods. So normal cycles when it's normal, short luteal phase when it's a little bit high, irregular cycles, so skipping months altogether when it's moderately high, and amenorrhea or absence of your period when it's very high. So as your prolactin increases, we actually see a change in your cycle. And as your prolactin drops with treatment, you actually see a regression to the normal. That's fascinating fascinating to me. Maybe it's not to you, but that's fascinating. And so we can want to check your thyroid and your prolactin. Those are easy blood tests. We can check to see if something's going on there. Also, extreme stress can cause something called FHA, functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. This can be from chronic illness, stress, from exercising hard, like you're training for the Olympics, from caloric deficiency, like an eating disorder or extreme weight loss. These things sometimes change the body signals so that the brain doesn't send out enough hormones to help you ovulate. I always think about this evolutionary. So if the body is undergoing an extreme stress because you're running from a bear or migrating across the country or there's a huge famine or there's a pandemic, maybe this isn't the best time to get pregnant and this is the body's response. The problem is it can take a very, very long time to recover from FHA. And so if you have this, your estrogen levels are super low and you need estrogen replacement. So for thyroid or prolactin abnormalities, you need medication to treat those. And FHA, you may need estrogen replacement. You need to know if you have these. Another common cause is at the ovarian level and it's called PCOS. You may have heard of PCOS. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's pretty common and it's associated with irregular periods, high androgens or male hormones like testosterone, which can cause acne and can cause hair thinning in the temporal area, and it can cause hair growth on your face or your body, and also a very characteristic look of your ovaries on ultrasound. I always call this a crowded ovary, so your ovary is full of little follicles, and that follow, those little follicles are making estrogen, and they're confusing the brain. An interesting thing is that PCOS is increasing as we're seeing more women become overweight because fat cells make estrogen too, and that estrogen confuses the brain. PCOS it is not good or normal to have periods every few months or not at all. So you probably will need medication. You can get endometrial cancer if you don't ever bleed and all these follicles are making estrogen because that estrogen is stimulating the inside of the uterus and it is important for you to bleed it out. So please see a doctor if any of these things are happening to you. Also, your periods can be abnormally heavy. So a normal period is five to seven days and it's usually heavy the first couple days and then lightens out. You shouldn't be soaking through your clothes. You shouldn't be soaking through tampons. You should not have to use two tampons at once. And if these things are happening to you, there could be something wrong. Things that can go wrong can be uterine fibroids, endometrial polyps, bleeding disorders. And so you don't know. Sometimes you have no other signs that these things are happening to you. And so when your periods are really heavy, that's called menorrhagia. Heavy and regular periods is very characteristic that there could be something going on. So bleeding through your clothes, needing multiple feminine hygiene products, mm -mm, not normal. Pain with your periods is another one. Pain with your periods is called dysmenorrhea. Now listen to me. Periods are not a walk in the park. I'm a woman. I've been there too. So your uterus has built up a lining to support a pregnancy that is not going to happen. So now your uterus is contracting and all that tissue has to come out. Contractions do cause some pain, but hear me right now. That pain should not interfere with your quality of life. That pain should not interfere with your quality of life. Meaning if you cancel plans with friends, you don't go out to dinner, you're missing social events, you're missing your life. You're calling in sick to school. You're calling in sick to work. You're laying on your bed. You're unable to move. You're needing narcotic pain medications. Friends, these things are not normal. This is highly concerning. 
and this could be endometriosis, which is an inflammatory condition where the body has implants of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. These implants can cause a lot of pain and inflammation, and it is very characteristic pain with intercourse called dyspareunia, pain with your period, and also bowel changes around your period, like IBS symptoms or irritable bowel syndromes. So if you have diarrhea or constipation or gas when you're on your period, these things are highly suspicious. Endo is very difficult because it is a surgical diagnosis only. And so that could be happening to you. You do not know. And very often endometriosis takes years. I mean, my endo patients will say, I'm the fourth doctor they've seen. They've been telling people for five years this is going on. It is hard to get diagnosed. It is highly correlated with depression because you're constantly being told that you're not tough enough to deal with your periods. Uterine fibroids, which are balls or tumors, but they're the uterine muscle cell is kind of formed into a ball in the muscular portion of the uterus. They can cause heavy and painful periods. So uterine fibroids can often be detected or they can be detected on ultrasound, but these can cause really painful periods. And then scar tissue inside the abdomen. So if you've had lots of prior surgeries in the past or infections, that can cause painful periods as well. It is really important that you understand your body so that you can be your own best advocate. I'll say a last side note is that birth control pills or hormonal birth control in general can cause abnormal absent periods as part of how those hormones are helping you. So if you're taking birth control pills, you should have a period in the placebo week of your pills, or if you're taking them continually, which means you skip the placebo week and go to a new week, it is very common to not have periods at all. So that is okay. Similarly, if you're using a progesterone contraceptive, like the progesterone shot, the Depo-Provera shot, or the IUD, like the Mirena or the Skyla, or the implant, like Norplant or Implanon, those are long-acting progesterones, and they can often thin the lining and lead to no periods or random spotting. So those are normal and expected side effects of those types of hormonal contraception. I'm gonna be doing an episode soon on all your period questions and answers. So if you haven't gotten it answered yet, please, please leave it in the comments so that I can get to it. I wanna include all your questions and please let me know what you want to have answered. As always, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. You can listen to the As A Woman podcast. And I just wanna say a huge thank you from me to you because it means so much to have your support, to have you watching the episode and supporting me in my mission of educating women. Thank you.